Good evening. And so, friends, you find us all worked up here on Friday Eve, on the eve of the great Wembley final. Is it Cluffy's Cup or Tell's Trophy? Will Gaza galvanize? It's all very wearing. And I'm a bit drained myself at the moment. I've just returned from a flying visit to the land of the Lotus Eaters, where we've recorded a long interview with a lady modestly described by her manager as the greatest star in the universe. Madonna, sweet, unspoiled child. <laughs> now, when she read in the paper last week that I was going to talk to this pan-galactic nebula, Margaret Marshall of Red Hill in Surrey wrote and told me, beware. She said, the, the Iraqi minefields are child's play compared to that woman's bedroom. <laughs> well, Margaret, the experience interviewing Madonna has changed me in ways that you will never know. <laughs> but I'm still here. <laughs> From Madonna, it's a mere sidestep to Miriam Margulies, who also punches her weight. And for the first time, the fast rising star of This is David Lander, Canadian lager commercials, and whose line is it anyway? Tony Slattery. Now, yeah, and I knew my first guest when he was an apple polisher for Jimmy Young. <laughs> Then, as if by magic, he was clearing the hurdles in chariots of fire, taking a passage to India, and oozing it from every pore in the charmer, and don't wait up. And now he's been cunningly cast as a perfect hero. I'm not a bit surprised. Welcome, Nigel Havers. We've nice got we've got the audience. They, they are good. Yes, make me feel so at home, or even more nervous. I don't know which. <laughs> but we've got a, a stretch because Miriam is on. We've we've yes. extended the sofa. Oh, I see. Yes, of course. I wonder where you were pointing for a minute. Yeah. Tell yes. us about this perfect hero. You you play a, a badly burned pilot. At least I've been I've been looking at the trail. Yes, I uh, yes. Um, we've seen you with well, my favourite picture of you with the paper bag over. Your head. <laughs> I've done that one. Is it that a yes. deliberate attempt to break away from being? Charlie Charm. You know, I never set out to do that, but um, I suppose in a way it is. Um, it all started with, with my, um, my friend and agent and co-partner, Michael Whitehall, reading a book and then giving it to me to read. And uh, it, the book so moved me that I thought I really must have a go at doing this. But did they want to buy it, though, in the first place? No, they didn't want to buy it. I went to um, London Weekend with a book, and I, when, when an actor takes a book to a, a television company, you can almost see the producers going, <laughs> because it means they've got to read it, number one, you know. <laughs> I'm not being might, rude or anything. No, no, but they might watch you for something else. Well, you know, you, you never you, know. And, you, they, you, and they, exactly, they might want me to play, you know, The Saint or something, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I could watch them, um, or The Charmer, or another. <laughs> I could watch them thinking, oh, I've got to read a book, which they did, in fact, read, and they, and they rang up and said, thank you very much, we, we think it's wrong, and we don't want to do it. Oh. And I said, oh, right. This is the first time I've ever done this. It wasn't going so well, I thought. <laughs> and they said, um, maybe it's because the, the leading man uh, is disfigured, you see. And uh, that's maybe not such a good look. So I said, well, that is the point of it. So they said, that's why we don't want to do it. And uh, that was it. And then two days go by, and they bring back and say, look, please, we, we've changed our minds. We now want to do it. All the reasons we said we didn't want to do it are the reasons that we should do it, which Quite is very bold of them. Isn't it a worry to you? Because you have always been Harry Handsome. Oh. And, you oh, know... I don't, I don't know about that. God, no, I well, I look... no, you're... Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be my I don't taste, think of myself but... <laughs> no. Thank God. <laughs> yes. I was Warren Clark's taste for a bit. But, yes, you, know. you were. Yeah, that was good sleepers. Oh, it was fun to do. God, we had some fun. How's your it? Russian? It's tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> I never finished a sentence in Russian ever. Yeah. Because I used to laugh so much. Well, anyway. Warren said that, that you turned to speak to each other in Russian. We couldn't, you... we couldn't work together at all, really. We never really completed any sequence without <laughs> having to stop. And the director was worse. We used to start and he'd walk away. Anyway, that's another story. Well, we turn to a perfect yeah. hero because it is unusual for you. Yes. And um, I, we've got a little sneak preview oh, great. Of, of you looking the way we all know that you really look before the plastic surgery. Let's have a quick look. You'll get a lot of that. Get used to it. I don't think anyone could get used to it, actually. Yes, they can. Exceptional people like Tim Holland. Apart from anything else, his wife left him. I didn't know that. Poor old Tim. 
Tim doesn't feel poor or old, nor must you. I told you very soon you'll be almost normal. And I don't feel it. You just get used to the idea that your appearance doesn't attract the women like it used to. You'll have to work harder at it, that's all. Work harder? I'd rather pack it all in if that's what it means. Tell me about it. The story. Well, it's a very simple story, actually, and that's what I, I was, and so attracted me, I, th I think, about a, a young man. I say young, <laughs> no, but he is a young man, and uh, um, he, in the first ten minutes, he's he's blown out of the sky, hmm. and very badly burned, and it's really a, a, a story about his struggle to come to terms with. What, you know, and he'd been enormously good-looking, and he'd Well, been... he'd had a very nice time up till then. He'd had a very lucky time. He was successful at university, and he had plenty of girlfriends, and he had no troubles at all. I mean, everything was going swingingly. It was his idea to join up and become a pilot, and I have enormous respect for the pilots, I must admit, as I, as I found out while making them. It's based on Archibald... Well, it's based on... Mac Mackendo, is it? Um, there's ob Plastic obvious surgery. similarities between... Yeah people of the, of the period, and Mackinder mm. being one of them. But, I mean, it's really a very s simple family story about how his family are affected. And Bernard Hepton is in it. He's mm. not chasing me this time. He's playing my father, and he's quite wonderful, I think. And Barbara Lee Hunt plays my mother. And, and all the performance, I think, is tremendous. Did it's you it's go what happens to my life, really, and how I struggle to get back in the sky again. Did you go and, and see any people who'd suffered from these burns? Yes, I did. I went down to East Grinstead, where this hospital um, still is, of course. Yeah. And in fact, the, a lot of the buildings that uh, Mackinder, the surgeon, used are still there. They're, they're, they're listed buildings now. You can't pull them down, these old huts. And I met some guys, um, some pilots. They still have to have operations, these guys. After, you know, 50 years, they still have to have their faces every year patched up. Incredibly brave people. God, I can't really... Did it move express you, my, Oh, it was terribly emotional for me. And I got so involved in the part, it was almost embarrassing. I mean, for the first time ever. I suppose I spent three hours every morning in the makeup chair, and sometimes longer. And I used to, I was dreading that, because I hate sitting in the makeup chair for more than two seconds. And I'd rather not have any makeup, really. I want to get on with it. But this time, of course, I, I couldn't, and I had to sit there and have it done. And I suddenly realized I used that time, which I'd never had before, to, to, to get into the part. And it was extraordinary how that sort of, I couldn't shake it off. I got into it, and for the six months, I was totally that character. Yeah. And what about you, your fellow actors and actresses? How did they react to you the first time they saw you in this maker? Well, they were incredible. I walk on the set and they, you know, I, I, they couldn't do enough for me. They, were my, they got my coffee, they got my chair, they <laughs> stroked me, they said, oh, you all right? And uh, it was really sweet, you know. And after about two weeks, they got used to it and get your own coffee. And they were really <laughs> interested in me at all, which, which, which for me explained a lot because, I mean, of course, you know, if you live with someone who was badly s scarred or, or whatever, you'd get used to it and you wouldn't even notice it, would you? No, yeah, but I mean, uh, did you have, I'm sure you did think while, while you were doing it, how you would cope if such a thing happened to you in real life? It never stopped crossing my mind, so yeah. to speak. Every single day that went by, I thought, God, if this happened to me, how it would alter everything that I take for granted. <laughs> and extraordinary. And, uh, in a way, the film is a tribute to the guinea pigs and people like Geoffrey Page, who helped us advise us on the film, who was shot down three times. It's a tribute to these, to these boys. Yes, of course, we've, we've been lucky to have that marvellous Simon, Simon West. Well, of course, who brings us right up to date. You know, Absolutely. Is. The strange thing is that, that that particular kind of surgery, I don't think it's advanced all, all no, that much, has it? Extraordinarily, it, it, it hasn't. And uh, I mean, very you know, little, little bit, but uh, Mackindo discovered um, one pilot fell into the sea and was two hours before they rescued him. And he realized that the salt water helped enormously. And that's when the saline became popular, which is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And then the last thing we've seen, as we talked about with sleepers, which was very well received, wasn't it? It was great, yeah. I mean, it went really well. I, I sort of knew it was good because the scripts were so good, you know? Was, was your father any help? Because he was attorney general and would have had a lot of dealings with spies and yeah. spy catchers and all the rest of yes. it. Was he any help to you on how to behave like a spy? Or no, He has no idea what spies are like, I don't think, actually. <laughs> um, uh, I was, I'm often asked, you know, were, were, were I ever approached? Because apparently I'm the sort of material that they go far for. And I said, of course, you know that if, if I was approached, I'm never allowed to tell you. So you'd never know, would you? <laughs> Quite a nice little dinner. It is. <laughs> Were you ever approached? I can't tell you. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, look, we might worm it out of you before we're finished. <laughs> so, The Perfect Hero, incidentally, starts tonight. Right. So we're looking forward yes, to seeing that. great. Thank you for joining us. Stay Thank with you. us, please. Thank you very Nigel much. Nigel